Chairman Gurley, Vice Chair Ward, we just adopted the 2011 budget for Wake County and um, just wanted to take a moment and thank you all for being with us and for talking to the citizens about the budget. Sure, happy to be here. Thank you. Commissioner Gurley, the board passed the budget with just a few changes from what Mr. Cook recommended on May 17th. Can you tell us how the board members contemplate the budget? Obviously the process of developing a budget is a long process. Part of that process is evaluating the, the budget as it's presented to us, but also listening to the public and getting input from citizens. So I believe every commissioner was, was very open and available to the public and considered what the public had to say. Ms. Ward, as you heard the manager's recommended budget back in May, what things really stood out to you? Maybe some of the things that you were most pleased to see in the recommended budget. Well, I was pleased to see that we were able to meet the school's requested budget and we didn't uh, increase the amount, but we at least were able to meet the budget. And this has been a tough budget year. Not as much money as we've always had in the past because of sales tax distributions uh, down. And so for a lot of reasons, I was pleased to see that it didn't go any lower than it did. Well, I, I was pleased to see that we funded the continuum of care for mental health. Uh, that's been a goal of this Board of Commissioners for several years. We have the new facility, a crisis center, opening October uh, this year, and we were able to, to provide funding for that, that level of care that's necessary to help those that can't help themselves. During the work session, the Board of Commissioners had lots of suggestions about the recommended budget. How did you all come to those discussions? Well, the Soil and Water Board, um, they have had several cuts to their uh, staff in the last few years, and I think that we definitely heard from a great many citizens in Wake County, for instance, small farmers who actually depend on them for advice when they're beginning their farming process, and they were all really distressed to know that they might not be able to get as much help as they could in the past. But we also heard from people at the university, we just heard from lots of people, and. I have always appreciated what they do, even though I'm not a farmer, and I, but I have asked them advice on a couple of different things over the years as it related to soil erosion and runoff, and uh, I was pleased that we were able to put that staff person back in the budget that had been recommended that it be removed. Mm -hmm. I think it was interesting that the two items that we added back in, the, the staff person for soil and water mm -hmm. and a staff person for the veteran services office, right. Those were two examples where there was some confusion uh, over the role for their county functions versus some other functions. Mm -hmm. For example, the Veteran Services Office, uh, we decided to keep the, a uh, clerical position there and discovered through the budget process that there was some confusion over how their workload is reported to the state just like there was confusion with soil and water over what their responsibilities were for, for example, the Falls Lake watershed area. And so not only were we able to keep those two positions, but we could give some direction to help clarify their, their, their function within the county. Some of the Board of Commissioners' top priorities include the continuum of care that we talked about and environmental stewardship, which is part of the Soil and Water Conservation Board. Tell us what other Board of Commissioners' goals this budget fulfills. Well, supports our human service needs and that's uh, applicable to practically directly to the individuals that need uh, health, mental health, or social services services and as you well know we combined those three boards 13 years ago I believe it was in 1997 and uh, in order to be able to better serve the public I along with Tony, am very, very pleased to know that we are able to build this mental health center because we have needed that for quite a long time. And the fact that we're actually almost there is very exciting to me. One other thing that we did, or in the process of doing at the moment, is uh, adding an addition to the animal shelter in Wake County. And pretty soon, I think it's like June the 30th, we're going to have a ribbon cutting on that new addition. And, uh, and during the last year, I adopted a puppy from there, so I feel especially strongly about it. <laughs> I guess a very important goal of this board is to plan for the future. Right. We had the Blue Ribbon Committee on the future of Wake County looking at all of our infrastructure needs, and that was about two or three years ago. One of the major 
goals that was identified for us and that we accepted uh, readily was to provide for justice center. The new justice center, we had the uh, groundbreaking, it's got three cranes there actively building the next uh, courthouse for Wake County. We've also uh, moved forward with the detention, new detention facilities. Something I found really exciting was at the groundbreaking to be able to go to the public and say this is being done and this will help meet the needs of Wake County citizens for the next 50 years. And there's not a lot of things that we get to do no, we that, that provides <laughs> a, a solution for something for 50 years. So I, I really enjoyed that. Commissioner Gurley, Commissioner Ward, is there anything else you'd like to add? I, I just think that it's important for the public to understand that these are difficult times for county government. These are difficult times for families. The unemployment rate is still at historic high levels in Wake County. As a Board of Commissioners, we, we understand that, right. and this is the second year of declining revenues for Wake County, but our Board of Commissioners has kept as a major goal to operate with the monies that we have available. Right. At past two years for our retreats where we start planning the budget process, this Board adopted the goal of, of operating with no tax increase. And I think the public expects that of us. I expect that of us. We will operate uh, just like families do with the money that's available to us and uh, chose not to raise taxes during a recession. I would agree with you. I think that people in the county certainly expect us not to raise taxes, uh, not to raise the uh, taxes because they already have they're struggling and they and many many people are struggling that were related to the building industry and we've had so many people in Wake County that have had to declare bankruptcy as a result of investments that were made that suddenly could not be covered by the amount of money that they had involved in it and uh, I think everyone has been pleased to know that we have been very conscious of this and have actually our budget this year is less than it was last year and that has never happened before in all the years I've served on the board it's, and we're almost at a billion dollar budget so when you get up into that field even a few dollars you might not think that maybe a hundred thousand dollars would amount to very much but it does it amounts to a lot and I think that our staff and all the people that work for Wake County have certainly gone through the process of reducing their budgets in-house being able to look at ways that we can continue to serve the people in Wake County and do it well on a, on a limited budget, if you will. Thank you both for taking just a few moments to be with us. We really appreciate your time, and I'm sure we'll see you very soon here on Wake Gov TV. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you.